Every Nation Brisbane online. We are so blessed you're here to worship God with us as a spiritual family. My name is Bianca and we're so glad you could join us. Our online service is a communal and interactive worship experience. So before we get started, here's how you can best engage in the worship and the service with us. Try to make sure that you have a clear internet signal so that you'll have minimal disruptions, which can lead to distraction. If the screen freezes, just refresh your browser by reloading the page. Gather all your family and your housemates and find the biggest screen in your home. This is also best enjoyed with decent audio, so if you have speakers or headphones, turn them up to a comfortable level. You can interact with us on the chat by encouraging one another, including scriptures and letting us know how we can pray for you in the comments, and we'll be sure to pray for you. Now let's get ready to worship the Lord together. If you can, stand to your feet and make room and let us adore our King Jesus together. Hey, good morning, everybody. Sorry about the technical issues, but he's still worthy, right? Let's get ready to bless the Lord this morning. Are you ready? Let me see you on your feet.
Good morning, everybody. How you all doing? Welcome to Every Nation Brisbane. Wow, such a beautiful morning here in Brizzy. Uh, my name is Henry, and we're so glad that you can join us online this morning. If this is the first time that you're here with us, um, we'd love to connect with you. Um, you'll find in our comments that um, there's a little link to our Connect card. So take them some, some time to um, fill that Connect card out so that we can connect with you. Is that cool? Okay, let us know. Um, why don't you let us know where you're listening from around uh, Brisbane, Logan, or even other parts of Australia or around the world. Um, why don't you um, chuck in the comments uh, where you are watching from today. And uh, also, if you uh, want to do something a little bit different, why don't you take a selfie? Take a selfie of where you are watching from and post it up on our Facebook page, um, hashtag ENB the church. Okay, so that we can see you, see what your service environment looks like. Is that cool? Have some fun with that. Um, also, so right now we're, got, we're about to go into a bit of conversation. Okay, and so our question for this morning is this. Do you like gardening? Why or why not? Well, that's our question for this morning. Go ahead, get talking with the people around you and don't forget to um, put your responses in the comments, okay? Would love to, to, to hear from you. Is that cool? Okay, let's go. The thing about New York City is it really feels apocalyptic right now. 
People in New York City are dying. So many people dying every day. New York City alone now accounts for about a quarter of all confirmed coronavirus cases in the U.S. The crisis in New York reaching a critical mass. Masks are in um, significant shortage challenge. At this point, we've delivered three or 4,000 masks and about 500 face shields. This week, we're gonna deliver another 10,000 masks and about four or 500 more face shields. I've had a beautiful, wonderful experience of having a working relationship with the Every Nation pastors in China. And before we could ever even ask or even even think about where will these supplies come from, they began to ship them to us in New York City. And our Every Nation leaders in China, we just thank them and honor them for being so proactive and led by the Spirit of God. Our church has really been triumphant and everyone's praying. We're on prayer calls seven days a week. There's a sense that God is moving. The other side of this is that we're facing a loss, a loss of a nurse whom we loved, a great Christian woman who went to be with the Lord. We've had many church members who have had COVID-19 and passed through and they popped up, they came back from that. But to see a sister who is so loved and so beloved and so appreciated go to be with Jesus has been a painful loss. I think the need of New York City right now is is it needs an infusion of hope. And that's one thing as followers of Christ, we can bring hope. Our hope is, is that people will come back to God and that through this dark moment, the light and the hope of the gospel will shine forth and break into human hearts in ways like we've never seen in New York City. We thank you for your prayers and we thank you for your, uh, your care and concern for New York. And that's our great hope that God would take over the city. announced by various public health officials across this country, including the one we, we read off the top there the last uh, of the introduction in that right now, Ontario saying close your bars and the chief medical officers all dine in restaurants and bars to ensure that people can keep themselves and their loved ones safe. Hey, Every Nation Brisbane family and everyone tuning in. My name's Charles, and I have the privilege of reading God's scriptures today. Now, if you can, please stand in reverence for God's word, which comes from Galatians chapter 3, verse 19 to 29. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come, to whom the promise was made, and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has confined all under sin, that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under God by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. May God bless the reading of his holy word. Now let's prepare our hearts and tune our ears to what God has for us today. Thank you so much, Charles, for that reading. Let's um, pray. Thank you, God, for uh, the blessing of your word, which is an encouragement to us, which is a light to us uh, during this time. And any time, Lord God, we find ourselves um, just so thankful for your word, which is a constant source of hope for us and strength for us. 
And so, God, um, as we're looking at your word today, I, I pray, God, that you would help meet my friends and I as we delve into your word. We, we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will speak to us afresh this morning in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. All right, if you're next to somebody, high five them. If you're not next to anybody, high five us in the comments <laughs> and just, uh, yeah, just throw up an emoticon. I'm sure there's a high five emoticon there somewhere. Uh, well, it's so good to be with you this morning. My name is Nelly. I'm the senior pastor here at Every Nation Brisbane. And if you're watching us for the first time, welcome. So glad you could be with us here on this beautiful uh, Sunday morning. Uh, I wanted to read some of these answers. So the question was with regards to uh, whether you like gardening or not, uh, which is an interesting question, right? Uh, I, I'm, I'm loving seeing some of the answers. There are some very adamant no's, uh, even within marriages. Um, shout out to Raywin and Siosi. Uh, or otherwise known as Farmer George, uh, who you, he will be now known as Farmer George from now on. And wanted to shout out Raywin. It was she doesn't want anybody to know, but it was actually her birthday yesterday. So shout out to you, Raywin. Happy birthday. Uh, Angela says, shout out to you, Angela and Tim. Uh, yes, sometimes I had a big garden in South Australia and enjoyed gardening every now and then. I have a balcony now with a few plants, which is nice. Yeah, there's so, some some um, some real garden loving people some people love bunnings just going down to bunnings how, how many of you brothers out there feel like more of a man when you walk in in bunnings <laughs> there's something about oh, oh, power tools and stuff uh let's see um like well and well and sam they love going to gardening and uh, doing gardening and bunnings um i don't know whether it's jay and jerry both of you they find it re relaxing Jerma says that jim said she likes it but gardening doesn't like her <laughs> remember what she did with the baby tomato seedling okay now you're putting your issues on the thread <laughs> oh, so, so we've got quite a few no's some interesting answers thank you for uh for letting us know the reason why we're wanting to um talk about uh gardening today is a lot of what we uh are talking about today is, is seeds and, and and gardening and with regards to seeds i just wanted to thank you so much for uh especially for those brothers and sisters who are part of every nation brisbane and continue to sow into the ministry that we're involved in here um, we are uh, th uh, thankful for those who commit their tithes and their offerings uh, to the church and so here's some of the ways that you can give uh, online um, we we've got them up on the screen for you there uh, we've also got a link um, in the in the thread, I almost said the show notes as if I'm doing a podcast, uh, but you know what I mean. If you go uh, into the actual blurb of this, um, you can see our ways that you can continue to give and continue to tithe if you're a part of Every Nation Brisbane. Um, but we're so glad you join us. And uh, we, we want you to know, like, if there's any way we can pray for you, please let us know in the comments. Or if there is prayer that you need uh, that requires more personal attention, let us know in the um, message. You can you can private message us, and we have our prayer team that are available to pray with you online. Um, just let let us know how we can serve you. We're still here to serve. We're still the church. This is not uh, me talking to you through a phone as if um, I'm the only one doing church. You're the church too, as you're watching this. So we're thankful for that. So today. I'm talking about seed, and we're talking about the king and his seed. We're in this series called Antidote. We believe that God, through his son Jesus and his cross, uh, provides for us an antidote. And so we're going to talk about the seed. My title of my message today is Redemption Song. Redemption Song. Now, I am of the variety. I'll be completely honest, okay? I'm not really a gardening person. Uh, don't judge me. Don't judge me. That's just me. I'm not really into gardening as much. Uh, as, as, as a lot of people, I, I can't, you know, I, I appreciate the results. How many of you uh, agree with me, right? Like you appreciate the results of somebody who's tended to a nice garden. I love when the, the garden is a force of nature, but then it's also interpreted and, and, and well-groomed by humans, by, by yeah, us. And so I find um, gardens are a good place to rest and reflect. And not just to grow vegetables, although I love my vegetables. Yes. Do you love your vegetables? Uh, I love to eat vegetables. But I also find that gardens are a great place of rest. And it's interesting to note that Jesus um, shows us uh, that, that a place of rest, uh, there, there's many, there's many uh, references uh, in the garden when he would go off to reflect. And even on the last night of his life, he would spend it in a garden in the Mount of Olives called could Gethsemane. Get as well. um, there's something about the garden, right? We, we remember the Bible actually starts uh, the story of creation yeah, where yeah, humans are together with uh, God. They're together in a 
garden and they're walking in this place of relationship in a garden. The garden is a special um, place in scripture for us to encounter God. When we think about gardens, we think about the plants, um, all of the flora and fauna that, that is present in the garden. We see that all of it starts in seedling form. Actually, in Genesis chapter 1, we see the first emergence of the seed. And uh, it's actually there in the, in the creation story that uh, fruit will bear seed and seed will bear fruit. And there's this constant cycle. It's the, it's the cycle that we see. If you uh, look at the definition here that's given by the Occidental Arts and Eco Ecology Center of what a seed is, a seed is an embryonic plant enclosed in a protective outer covering, which is really interesting, right? It's, uh, I, I like how they put it this way. It's a seed is a plant in a box with its lunch. <laughs> a seed is a plant in a box with its lunch. One of the qualities about a seed is that it takes after where it came from. So it takes the character of which it came from. For instance, if it's an apple tree, no doubt it started and had its, uh, had its beginnings as an apple seed. So it takes, like uh, Matthew, uh, I believe it's Matthew chapter 7, that says uh, that no good tree can be a bad fruit, no bad tree can be a good fruit. Much like an apple tree, there's not an expectation for oranges to grow out of an apple tree. It always bears the fruit of that which it came from. And we see even in the way that God has designed the seed. God has designed it with a seed coat which is protective from the elements. Isn't it amazing? It's protected from the elements, yet within its infrastructure, there is a place for storing um, its food. And then there's the embryo of which it grow, which grows out of that place of food storage. I love this thought of it there being a protective outer, that there's an outer layer that God, by his amazing creativity, provides in his intelligent design an outer layer of protectivi uh, protectivity for, um, for the seed so that it can in itself can continue to grow and function. Also, we must note that a seed is also identified to fulfill its purpose, and that purpose is to multiply. So the purpose of a seed is to multiply. That's part of the reason why that seed exists. I love it here, like when we see in Genesis chapter 3, and what this is called is the protovangelion. I'll say that one more time, protovangelion. I'll even spell it for you, because I want to serve you, right where you are, P-R-O, pro, -O, uh, T, and then Evangelion, E-V-A-N-G-E-L-I-O-N. And what that means is it's the first presentation of the gospel, and so first being the prototype, and then Evangelion being the good news. It's, it's a precursor to everything that comes in, in, in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Now watch how this is unraveled in the form of C, Genesis 3 says, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Now, uh, obviously, God is referring to the enemy, the, the, the snake, the serpent. I'll put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. I'm just going to say this, okay? It's Sisters don't bear seed, okay? It's usually, it, it is men that have seed. Okay, so when he refers to her having seed, he's referring to the virgin birth, and then of, his birth, of her birth will come that which will bruise the... Powerful that the, the, the gospel and its presentation, even in Genesis, finds its place of, of, of seeing the gospel there, right, right there in Genesis chapter 3, that... Uh, within the virgin birth will come a seed and that seed will bruise the head of the enemy. Oh, I love that. I love that that gospel is already there. And what's mentioned there? The seed. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 12. Hopefully you're tracking with me. Let me know in the comments if, if you need some uh, more unpacking. And we will have a time after this for some discussion uh, after the service. And we'll tell you more about this after this message. But like, check this out. In Genesis chapter 12, what we see here is Abraham, who's noted uh, by, by Paul as being the father of our Christian faith. 
And this is the first time we encounter Abram. We, it doesn't say anything about uh, how old he is, or uh, it doesn't say anything about um, necessarily where exactly he's coming from, although we know his father is Terah from Genesis chapter 11. But we don't necessarily see anything with regards to this. And so what we're seeing here is, is a part of the promise that is given to Abram right at the start, right at the seed of his life. And l- let's look at what's said here. Now, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I'll read that one more time. Now, the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. So go from your country, the land which you started. Go from your kindred, your family, and go from your father, the place of security where you were born from. So he's basically leaving everything of security and then going to the land of which I will show you. So this promise that's given to Abraham or Abram at the time includes that there is a sowing and a going. Everybody say it with me. There is a sowing and there is a going. Part of a a seed's function is to leave the plant of which it came from in order to be sown into the ground and therefore start growing and going towards its destiny. Verse 2, Genesis 12, 2, it says, And I will make of you a great nation, speaking of fruitfulness, right? And I will bless you, and I will make your name great, that you will be a blessing. Mm. Now, if you remember what Charles said earlier, I want you to keep that in mind. As he was reading that scripture, he was talking about how that we are, if we are in Christ, we are heirs according to the promise that was given to Abraham or Abram. And this is one of those promises. Now, I want you to catch this, okay? I will bless you. I will make your name great that you will be a blessing. There's a purpose behind the blessing, and that is to multiply. Okay? The, the reason why God wants you to be blessed is because he wants you to multiply that blessing towards others. In other words, there's a sowing and a going, and there's a multiplication into a nation. Are you, are you catching where are we going with this? We're keeping it rhyming so that you can remember uh, these things. Then the third verse talks about, and I will bless those who bless you. So the reason why God has called you to be blessed is to be a blessing. And then you will also receive blessing. How many of you can testify to that? Like hopefully you've experienced that, that even during this time of quarantine, you've been able to uh, see moments that you're blessed. And then you also have uh, the opportunity to be a blessing. What a blessing it is to live in Australia during this time. When we see... um, the catastrophes that are happening all over the world due to this coronavirus, and we see how blessed we are to live in this nation. It's amazing to see that that because of the infrastructure, because of the great land that we live in, and we acknowledge, again, the the stewards and the custodians of this land. We be here in Australia. I hope you see that we are blessed to be here. And the Lord will bless those who bless us. And him who dishonors you, will he will curse. So he's going to take care of you, even those who uh, are what we call um, today in today's vernacular the the haters and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed so there's a sowing and a going there's a multiplication into a nation and there's a blessing in the lesson i know that doesn't quite rhyme but we'll we'll say there's a blessing uh, in the lesson let's let's say it like that so it rhymes but hopefully you catch what all the all of the stuff that god is promising abraham or abram at the time now, the, what makes a seed grow, okay, obviously it's God, and we'll get to that in a moment, but like, it's the environment of which the seed is sown. Now, let's look at the environment that's required for seed. This is very, very basic uh, study of plants here, but what you, what you need for within that environment is sun. You need uh, sunlight. You need chlorophyll, which is the, the, the green outer, which absorbs all of the nutrients um, for, a, for a plant to be able to grow. There's the air, the water, and the ground of which it's sown. I love this because you see this analogy of the seed being sown throughout Scripture. Another example is if you go to Ma- uh, Mark, sorry, Mark chapter 4, you see the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower is where a sower sows seeds And he sows them on different forms of ground, right? He sows them on on a pathway and birds come up and snatch the seed. 
sows it on uh, rocky ground. And as the seed is sown on rocky ground, it takes root, but it's not able to grow deep because the rock surfaces are too hard and therefore it ceases to grow. Then he throw, uh, some of the seed is thrown on thorny bushes. And as it's thrown in thorny bushes, the thorns grow and strangle it out. As it's growing, the thorns grow and strangle it out. Now, I want to just mention this as a side note because I believe this is prophetic for what we're dealing with right now with the emergence of this coronavirus and us being in quarantine. Because Jesus goes on later in Mark chapter 4 to explain as to what the thorny bushes represent. The thorny bushes represent the worries and the cares of this world which strangle out the word of God. And many of you, I just want to say this prophetically, many of you have faced situations even now where you believe God to be true. You believe him to be true to his word, true to his promise. And that's why I'm here trying to encourage you with the word of God this morning. Hopefully you are. But the cares of this world come out like thorny bushes to strangle the word and the promise of God in your life. Now, I really want to encourage you today. God wants to eradicate the thorny bushes. God wants to do some weeding in our lives. In fact, this is the reason why I believe fully that later on in the Gospels, what you end up reading is that <laughs> even though it was a form of mockery because Jesus was considered the king of the Jews, and so the Roman soldiers put upon his head a crown of thorns, that he would be crucified with that symbol. They saw it as a sign of mockery, but we see it as prophetic action to know that the cares of this world would strangle out the word of God are actually taken to the cross with Jesus as he took those thorns upon his head. And then there are the good soil, which the seed is sown upon, and the word germinates because the environment is good. There's a lot to be said about environment for seed to grow. God doesn't respond to environment. God responds to faith. But we need to create environments within our homes and within our jobs and within our situations to ensure that the seed of God's word continues to germinate, continues to grow in our lives. This is what we're seeing here. He wants the seed to grow 30, 60, and 100 fold. This is the type of environment God wants the seed of his word to grow in. Also, he loves when he gets the credit because he is the one that causes growth. Now watch this. Paul talks about in an environment in, the, in 1 Corinthians when he's writing to the church at Corinth because people start talking about, oh, this is my disciple. This is the guy that I was the, I was the one that raised him. I was the one that taught him. He, he's in my life group. And so what happens is, is that Paul says, no, I planted the seed. Apollos, another apostolic leader, he's the one that watered the seed. But who brought the growth? Who brought the growth? It was God that brought the growth. And this is where we start to see that seed is not just what is sown, but it's embodied in who was sown. Now, coming back to Genesis chapter 3, the protevangelion that I was talking about, the emergence of the gospel, even in Genesis, that one would be the seed of a woman. And that seed would grow to stomp upon the serpent's head. And we see this in Jesus John chapter 12, and Jesus answered them, the hour has come for this son of man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loses his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And then he carries on here. I want you to catch all that he's saying here. If everyone who serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Very truly, I say to you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Remember what we talked about. A seed sown into the ground must Therefore, be vulnerable and die to its own agenda in order that it may produce many seeds. This is what Jesus did for us. He was taken literally from his crucified state into the ground, sowing his life 
in order that we may see the remedy that is bought for us, the antidote that is bought for us in the gospel, in its fruitfulness. And therefore now we are his, all because the seed of God was sown. And we, my friends, are the fruit. And we get to partake in the fruit. See, the fruit no longer belongs to the tree. Have you ever walked past a tree? Have you ever walked past a tree and go uh, and gone to see it and you look at the tree and the tree is consuming its own fruit? How ridiculous is that, right? An orange tree going, hmm, my oranges are nice. No, the fruit is born in order for other people to consume that fruit, to enjoy that fruit. And even if the fruit stays on the vine, there's seed within it that causes the growth further of other trees. It exists for the benefit of others. And Jesus Christ laid his life down in order that we may experience that fruitfulness. He became the seed who died for us. Now we come to Galatians. Now we come to that passage that Charles read. Galatians 3. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions till the seed, capital S, because it's referring to Jesus, should come to whom the promise was made and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now, a mediator does not mediate for one only, but God is one. So not only is Jesus the seed, but uh, the one who mediates, but he's also God. Now, I want you to catch this part. This part's quite, quite revealing. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we may be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Now, that word tutor... In the Greek, actually means, and I've got it written there so you can see it, in a household, the guardian that's responsible for both care and discipline of the children. Now, some of you might think of a tutor in this state as somebody who's like, ah, you need to do this, you need to do that, don't do this, don't do that. But actually, it's the, the care of one who disciplines. The, the Bible also says in Hebrews, right, Hebrews chapter 12, that God disciplines those whom he loves. And so we may look at it like, right, like, I don't know about you, but like, I've got some neighbors who have fabulous gardens, but I'm responsible for my garden. And I actually enjoy the property of which God has me living on. I'm blessed. But it's so easy to be like that child that looks over the fence and goes, Dad, how come they get to have this in their garden? Dad, how come, you know, like they're just constantly on the fence looking around. Well, they've got this over their side. They've got this over on, on that side. You all know the, the saying, right? The grass is greener on the other side, right? But the grass is greener where it's tended to. The grass is greener, uh, greener where it's cared for. And so we look at the fence as if God is trying to restrict us. Like he's the sort of disciplinary that just doesn't want us to enjoy that which he, he has provided for us. We'd rather jump the fence, not recognizing that that fence is actually there to protect us. So we're like that child who runs on the road. I'm free! Only to see a Mack truck heading in the opposite direction. That's not the way our daddy is. He loves his sons and daughters. And this is where Galatians 3 goes from here. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ... Check this out, guys. There is neither Jew nor Greek. So it doesn't matter about your ethnicity. There is neither slave nor free. It doesn't matter about your economic status or your status as an employee or employer. It doesn't matter. There is neither uh, male or female. So it doesn't matter about the gender that you carry. You are all one in Jesus Christ. Now here we go. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You are heirs according to his promise. Brothers and sisters, you are in his will. He, he, he invites you to be an heir, to inherit the promise that has been given to us. What is that promise? That promise starts with redemption. God uses his seed sown into the ground to die in order that we may re be redeemed. What does redeem mean? Redeemed or to redemption means that there is deliverance from sin. You're free from sin now. You're saved now because Jesus became the seed that laid his life down. 
You're rescued now. You're in a state of being bought at a price. Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price as the ultimate seed for you to receive ultimate salvation. But that salvation is not just for you. He doesn't just set you free for your own sake. But he sets you free in order that you may declare a redemption song. I'm reminded of Bob Marley. For those of you who like Bob Marley, I'm reminded of his song, the redemption song. And then part of that song he sings, how, will, how long shall they kill our prophets? While we stand aside and look, some, stay, uh, some say that it's part of it. We just got to fulfill the book. That's how he sings it. Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Because all I've ever had redemption songs. God wants us to speak up about our redemption and to share with others the fruitfulness, the fruit of our redemption. Psalm 107, you may remember this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been redeemed as a part of of being an heir according to the promise that was given to Abraham through Jesus Christ for us, then it's time for us to speak up. There are many ways to do that. We've been giving people the challenge. And hopefully, for those of you who are part of Every Nation Brisbane, hopefully you've taken the time already to do your two-minute challenge, to share your faith on your platform. Just tell other people about how your life's been changed and transformed so that people that don't know Jesus can hear your story. I want, to, I want, you to, I want to encourage you to do that. That's part of letting the redeemed of the Lord say so. What also is in that promise? Let's go back to what Abraham was given as we close. There is a sowing and a going. God wants us to sow ourselves in order that God may go in us and through us to the nations. There's a multi speaking of nations, there's a multiplication into a nation that God wants to multiply us to be a blessing to this nation. Many of you who are watching this may be uh, born and raised in other nations and you're here and you're just like, man, I'm just going to get what Australia has for me. No, God wants us to multiply and be faithful in this nation to serve this nation in order that it may thrive. And then it's thriving, Jeremiah uh, chapter 19, right? Uh, sorry, chapter 29. And it's thriving. We would also see a blessing in our lives. And speaking of blessing, there's a blessing in the lesson. There's a blessing in the lesson for you today. Now today, usually what we do is we go into a time of discussion, reflection. And um, what we're going to do today is, is different. So I'm I'm. Uh, on the screen right now is the discussion reflection questions. I'm going to read them for you. And in just a, a, a moment, uh, you'll be able to discuss them. Well, you'll be, we'll give you an avenue to discuss them after the service uh, in what we call the PS, the post service. And we'll give you more details with regards to that. But here, here's the questions, guys. Have you received God's redemption through Jesus? If you have, how open are you? Uh, how open have you been to saying so, talking about your redemption around others who do not yet know the redemption of Jesus. And if you have not yet, would you like to? Would you like to receive Jesus' redemption? Just while that's on the screen, I want to pray for you today. If you're um, watching this today and your desire is to give your life over to Jesus and receive his redemption, then pray this prayer with me, would you? Just pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I give myself to you today, recognizing that I am a sinner and that you are the only one who saves me. I recognize that I've been living life my way and putting my trust in my own ability, but I want to put my trust in you today. So I hand my life over to you. Take full control. I declare today that I'm forgiven and my life belongs to you. I am no longer my own, but I'm yours, and you are my God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as if, if you um, have prayed that prayer, we want you to just let us know how we can serve you because we, we want to help you. You can't do this alone, especially as we're in quarantine. We want to know in the comments if you prayed that prayer. Just let us know. Just say, oh, Pastor Nelly, I prayed that prayer. And we'll get our prayer team to come alongside you to help you connect with God and connect with others that can help you to grow in God. You can't do this on your own. Just like a plant, uh, it grows in the, in the best of environments. 
So at this time, I'm just going to hand it over to Henry as we get ready to partake in communion today. Thank you, Pastor Nelly. So as we come to our time of communion this morning, I hope that you've got your um, your emblems ready, your your juice or your bread, and, and it's all ready to go. Um, I would like to invite each of us to set the focus of our hearts and our minds on Jesus Christ right now as we come to the communion table before God and partake of communion with Him. There was something that our Pastor Nelly um, shared earlier this week at our shift prayer meeting, um, which really grabbed my attention. It was in the context of um, how we should approach prayer. But for me, it awakened my ears and my, my heart to, um, to other aspects of my life as well. In terms of worship, um, reading my word, but even communion as well. So the thought was this. Sometimes we can come with this transactional mentality instead of a relational mentality. A transactional mentality thinks like this. I will do this to tick the boxes. I will do this because I have to. What I'm getting, what am I getting out of this? Give me what I need right now. Right? That's the transactional mentality. You know, for example, um, I don't know if this happens to any of you parents out there, but um, my kids, right? I love my kids. And they can be like this sometimes. Daddy, can we go here? Daddy, can we go this? Daddy, can you buy me this? Daddy, can you buy me an iPhone? Daddy, can you buy, take me here? Daddy, daddy, daddy. And I'm like, can you like just say, I love you, daddy, or give, give daddy a hug or something like that, right? That's how kids and, you know, and, the, and just their transactional mentality. Whereas a relational mentality comes like this. What can I bring? What can I bring before my Father, my Lord, and my King? How can I position myself before my Father? In Matthew 26, it tells the story of um, the woman that came with the alabaster jar. A very expensive alabaster jar. And how she came and poured it on Jesus' head. This was her relational mentality being expressed. It was her act of worship towards Jesus. She was so focused on, no, on Jesus. No one else. No one else in the room mattered. Whatever was happening around. Whatever was happening on screen. No one, nothing else mattered. It was just the focus of worshiping Jesus right there and then. I know it, it can be hard to engage in our online services from the comfort of our homes, right? You know, I get it. You know, we're sitting in our nice comfy chairs, right? Or maybe you've got your lunch cooking already, right? And so you have to pop in and out to go and check it, right? I get it. There's things that still need to happen and stuff. But all these variables, they can influence and shape our re relational mentality towards God but can I encourage us with this as we come to our time of communion this morning let us set aside anything and everything that may distract us let's come with a relational heart that is focused on God alone and his great love for the world and his creation so as we come to the communion table, let's come with an expectation that what we are bringing before God is our complete attention and focus on Him, to adore Him, to worship Him, to thank Him for His goodness, for His grace, His mercy, His power, His authority, His wisdom, His knowledge. This is our great God that we get to worship. So if you have your bread and your juice ready, I want to pray. Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for this moment. 
that we can come before you and give thanks for your wonderful love for each and every one of us. Thank you for the plan that you had in place before the formation of the earth. Thank you for your son Jesus and the sacrifice that he paid on that cross with his body. This morning, as we receive this bread as a symbol of your body, the body of Christ that was broken for all, we receive your plan of salvation. And we receive the new life that comes from the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. You may partake of your bread right now. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Father, thank you for this cup. Thank you for the new covenant in Jesus' blood. Thank you that you fill our heart with praise and joy as we set our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you for the privilege of being called your sons and daughters, created by you, chosen by you, and blessed by you. So Father, right now, as we prepare our hearts to partake of this cup, we thank you for the power and resurrection of Jesus. You may partake of the juice right now in Jesus' name. So, as we get ready to um, go into worship, I just want to quickly um, also remind you that if you have any prayer requests or um, you know, anything that God may have been speaking to you through the message today, um, just pop them in the comments. You know, would, would love to take some time to pray with you as well. Um, but also we're just going to go into uh, hearing a testimony from um, one of our church members right now. Check it out. Hey everyone, Lafayette here. So born and raised in Naitara, South Auckland, New Zealand. Um, at a young age, I was addicted to alcohol and drugs um, so, uh, mainly drugs because uh, uh, I guess it took me to a place where I could forget uh, my my issues and problems um, so you can imagine I was always high most of the time um, but then uh, there was a point a uh, point in time in my life where I was uh, about to lose everything um, and that really broke me, seriously broke me. Um, so at that time, um, I cried out to God and, you know, asking for his help to, uh, to please come rescue me, even though I did all these things, these, these selfish things, drinking, going out all night, uh, getting high. But he still pulled through. He came, he showed me the prayer of salvation. Uh, so I prayed it. I, I repented, asked God for forgiveness, and yeah, you know, things didn't change overnight. You know, I still had to do my bit, so I continued to pray, ask, um, attend the church, and again, God pulled through. He put men in my life, He put families in my life. Um, so I got new friends, and friends that became um, family. So yeah, you know, real good family friends who prayed for you, who really cared for you, who wanted the best for you. So they were just imitating God's love. Seriously, they were imitating God's love. So, um, yeah, so right now I'm in uh, Kids Church. It's me and my wife, we're serving in Kids Church, you know, uh, trying to help share the gospel to these younger generation who are our future leaders. So yeah, that's my two minute testimony. Peace out.
our trust in you, despite whatever we're facing.
midst of our storms, we can sing. Still continue to choose to praise Him today. Why don't you choose to praise Him right where you are. Sing this with me. I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Come on, raise it up. Pull your weapon out. It's the melody saying, My weapon is a melody.
storm, you taught us to praise. I, I thank you, Lord, that you lifted your thank praise you, yeah. to the Father when you took upon yourself that cross. And so, Lord, we're reminded, God, we're reminded of the price that's been paid for us in your son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we get to praise you today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. At this time, we actually want to pay tribute. I'm going to stand up for this because I think it's important that we all stand where we are just to pay tribute to the great men and women who have laid their lives down. Speaking of somebody who initiated laying their life down, out of that model we see in Jesus, we've seen some great people in our military and our armed forces who have laid their lives down for us um, as Australians and as Australian residents, uh, residents here. Um, so we want to pay tribute. I know Anzac Day was yesterday, but we want to take some time to reflect and thank God for the gift that's been given to us, our civil liberties here in Australia. So won't you join me and just stand in just a moment of reflection and thanksgiving and silence uh, for those who have gone before us. Let's take some time to pray. God of love and liberty, we bring our thanks this day for the peace and security we enjoy, which was won for us through the courage and devotion of those who gave their lives in time of war. We pray that their labor and sacrifice may not be in vain, but that their spirit may live on in us and in generations to come, that the liberty, truth, and justice which they sought to preserve may be seen and known in all the nations upon the earth. This we pray in the name of the one who gave his life for the sake of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. How many of you are thankful for those who have given their lives for us to celebrate the freedoms that we get to celebrate here in Australia? And I'm so thankful to be in this land during this time especially. Man, I kind of blessed to be here in Australia. And that's coming from a Kiwi. <laughs> I, I really do count myself blessed to be here in the great land of, of Australia. Well, here's what's happening at Every Nation Brisbane coming up. Check it out. Here's the announcements for this week. Welcome to Every Nation Brisbane. We're a part of the Every Nation family of churches and ministries that exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. If you're watching us for the first time, we're glad you're here. Please fill out the Connect Card link below to help us get to know you better. Here at EN Brisbane, discipleship takes place most effectively in small groups, known as life groups. Life groups are open to anyone who would like to grow in their relationship with God. Here are the groups that met this week. If you aren't a part of a life group, we invite you to join one and jumpstart your walk with God. Please contact us via our website or social media outlets to get connected. 
our very own Life Group materials can be downloaded from our app or website to help start meaningful discussions in your meetings. So go ahead and try them out. Please take note of the following upcoming events. We have the privilege to come together online as a spiritual family to influence a shift in the atmosphere with our weekly prayer and worship night. We will be streaming live on Facebook every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. You are invited to Real Talk with Nelly as he talks with special guests from Brisbane and around the world about their journey towards a real faith in a real God. Invite your friends and tune in every Tuesday and Thursday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. via Facebook Live. Let's be encouraged, grow in community and pray for our global family. The Every Nation Campus team invites you to join Better Together every day from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. via Facebook Live. Every Nation Campus also wants to help you learn to lead. These interactive discussion-based sessions are open to everyone and focuses on developing Christ-centered leadership skills. Join us on Wednesdays or Fridays via Zoom. For details, check out the ENC Brisbane socials or reach out to Mark and Adele Dellett. All high school students are invited to stay connected by joining the Every Nation Youth Life Group via Zoom every Saturday at 1pm. Everyone is invited to join the Sunday Gatho every Sunday at 1pm. Gatho has a relaxed vibe get-together where we focus on growing our relationship with God. For Zoom details, check out the ENC Brisbane socials or reach out to Mark and Adele Dellett. Get your kids involved in hearing God's Word through Kids Church, which will be on after our regular online services every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. If you would like your children to join, please contact us via Facebook Messenger or email info at enbrisbane.org. Hey everybody, wow. What an awesome word from Pastor Nelly. We're coming to the end of our service today, but I just got a couple of highlight uh, announcement highlights that I just wanted to talk, uh, bring to your attention today. Kids, we've got Kids Church happening straight after this, yeah. 11.30. Okay, parents, so make sure you hook your kids up on that. Yes. It's going to be a great time for the kids to, to, to um, you know, to interact online. Okay, so parents, hook the kids up. Yes. Um, also, we have Making Disciples uh, happening in um, a couple of weeks' time. So we'd encourage you on Sunday, the 17th of May. Okay, so our Making Disciples class is a place where um, we will uh, equip you to um, preach the gospel and run effective life groups. Yeah. So if you want to run a life group, then you got to come to this. you got to be online to this. We'll have more details of um, when that will be happening. Okay, so you see the slide there. Cool. Okay, so also we have, um, don't forget the connect cards, right? In our comments area, if you've... Um, Jump on for the first time today. Would love to connect with you. So fill out your details, uh, any prayer requests that you may have. It's a great time to, to fill that out as well. So don't forget, we've got post service happening straight after here. Okay, and this is where we're going to go through um, the discussion um, and also some spend some time praying for um, anything that, that um, God has spoken to you during our service today. Okay, so um, hope to see you on the on the other side in the post service. Okay, so um, yeah, that's us for today. Thank you for taking the time to be with us and joining us today. Um, I pray that God's word will just um, bless you today. So if we can all um, pray the Lord's prayer together to end off our service today. Let's pray. Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. That's us. Thank you. God bless. See you.